this book, To Kill a Mockingbird. I don't think I've ever encountered a book like this. Just about 10 minutes ago, I was lying on a couch, cold compress on my head, yelling, what does it all mean? <laughs> my friends, never in a book have I had written out through it, ha, so many times in my notes. Everything Scout says kills me. <laughs> she is so, this character will live with me forever. I love Scout, probably my favorite character in a book ever. Out of all the books I've read, I love Scout so much. But this book, I, I don't think I'm doing book club right, guys. Uh, I shouldn't read three pages. We're gonna have to do this in parts for chapter nine. Three pages in, I'm laying on the couch. You know, I, I think someone else needs to take over book club. Catherine, someone, anyone. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Are you guys got your hot cocoa and marshmallows? Buckle in. I, I, does anyone else get this much stuff out of three pages out of a fictional book? Uh, I, I'm asking myself, am I a booktuber? Am I a Zoroastrian? Am I just someone trying to get through this life the best I can? What does it all mean? You know, is life really this absurd? This ridiculous? As I read about these people, how can they be so blind? So stupid? It's mind blowing. And you know what's funny? Will you guys stay with me for this one? I have so much to say. I, I need your help. I feel like you're my counselors. Magus needs deep psychoanalysis here to understand this world. Uh, I, right before I started reading my chapter for the day, I was watching YouTube. It was a professor of one of the big universities. And he was saying that his students, they were great at taking tests. They, they could take that information and, and, and apply it. He, he compared them to a dust rag when they got out of school. They were just useful, right? So what they had learned, you know, they could fix a carburetor or, or, or they could be a doctor or whatever. They could take that information they got and use that almost like a tool, almost like how they program the robots to build the cars in the factories. Now they would program people to do that one thing, but, but they weren't smart. They weren't reasonable. They couldn't think things out on their own. They could just take what they were fed and spit it out, regurgitate it. Right. And then they're called doctors. And it was bugging this professor. And so he was giving book recommendations to how to, to get his students to to be better than that. My friends. And, and oh, my God, guys. I remember just as a kid, the frustration that was the my ruling emotion I had as a child is frustration. I would have nightmares about it. I can't even tell you how it felt in my body. And maybe some of you know that that anxiety that this is wrong and everything I was being told for, from my parents and grandparents and, and churches and schools inside, it was going against my heart. And of course they tell you, don't question us. What do you know about life and living? And as a kid, and it starts to rip that heart out of you. And it has a physical effect and a, a mental effect. And that's what I got from these three chapters. I was feeling it all over again. What is wrong with these people? Oh, but then I laughed my ass off at the same time. I feel like I'm having a nervous breakdown when I read this book. I'm crying. I'm laughing. I'm angry. I love it. Okay, let's get started here. So much I want to cover. I don't know how much I'm going to cover. Uh, I don't know if I want you to see inside of me that deep. Uh, so here we are. Classic uh, Scout. She's in the schoolyard. You take that back, boy. She's getting in a fight. Her fists were clenched, ready to let them fly. She's thinking, I was far too old, too big for such childish things, but I soon forgot, right? She's starting to kind of mature, grow. She's remembering what Atticus is teaching her. It pops into her mind, but it still leaves her like that. She said, Cecil Jacobs made me forget. <laughs> oh, so uh, Cecil Jacobs is saying that her daddy defends N-words, okay? 
I like where we're going with this. I don't like it when they use the N word, but we get a good lesson here. So we're, we're, I'm glad to see it's going this way. So she's home now. She's asking her dad, Atticus, do you defend N words? He says, of course I do. And don't say the N word. Scout, that's common. This is starting to, this is when it's starting to hit me. That's common. That's, that's what everyone else is doing. Right? This is that frustration I had when I was a kid. My heart was telling me that's common. Everything else everyone is doing and saying it doesn't align with it's in my heart. But that's what everyone is saying is. I love Atticus is telling her, don't be common. Well, that's what everybody at school says. He says, from now on, it'll be everyone less one. Everyone less you, except for you. Be better than that. And my friends, this is, I wrote right there, I stand alone and put a Z there. For Zoroastrianism. Let me hit on this just for a minute. You guys know who I am and what I am. The thing that drove me mad is a child. Gave me that frustration. The stories. that they, they And they couldn't even explain it to a child in a reasonable way. They just get mad at me. Shut up. Don't question God. You want to go to hell? Just have faith. Just know it's how it is. The Bible's God's word. He wrote it with his own hand. Just listen to it and shut up. But can you please explain it to me so I understand? No, they couldn't. Because you can't. The stories in there of Moses, the hero of the Bible, going in and kill men, women, children. Take the spoils. Soldiers didn't want to do it. But Moses said, well, you can keep the sex slaves. They called that God. Stone your children when they're disrespectful. My own mother, I'd be looking her in the eyes and asking her to explain it to me. And she would, and I'm saying, don't you think that's not right? She thought it was right. She said it was right. To this day, she does. My friend, I love my mom with all my heart. She's probably watching this right now. She doesn't like what I do. You know, and that makes you feel bad, right? Even on 53, you want your parents to like what you do, to take your work and hang it up on the refrigerator. She hates what I do. And all I do is tell people that God is just good. The original religion, Zoroastrianism. God was the highest principle of good. He didn't get angry, jealous, hate, war, kill men, women, and children. Hey, he, there's no stories in the original religion that made a child feel icky inside. And we'll sit down and I'll be telling her, can't you see this? That God is just good? That he wouldn't have done those things, said those things? She'll look me right in the eyes and just disagree with me. My own uncle, I was having this conversation with him. He threatened violence on me. Both of them, both of them at different times. My one uncle, one of the largest preachers in Southern California, got up and was ready to brawl. And I said, what are you so angry about? I'm just telling you that God is just good. He's unmixed. He's not love and hate, peace and war. He, he's good. Why does that make you so angry? I understand why I get frustrated. Because it's so simple. Good is good. Bad is bad. I stand alone. I'm not common. And once I did that, that frustration went away. Now I have a whole new frustration. Why can't other people see it? Well, just like in this story, why can't these people that hate people because of the color of their skin see it's wrong? Who's still with me? Would you guys do me a favor? Please interact with me. I beg of you. I need this in this part of my journey on YouTube. I need you to say, I'm here, Mekas. I hear you. I might not even agree with you, but I'm here. Hey, hit that like button or the dislike button. Just let me know. There's a living body on the other side of this camera I'm looking at. Got more haws written in here. This whole book so far is filled with haws because Scout. Well, if you don't want me to grow up talking that way, why do you send me to school? Right? She said everyone at school talks like that. Why do you send me to a place that teaches this, that this is common? Love freaking Scout. 
I understand you, girl. I hear you. And I also see you just being scheming, trying to get out of school. I, I love you. <laughs> my, my father looked at me mildly, amusement in his eyes. Despite our compromise, my campaign to avoid school had continued in one form or another since my first day's dose of it. The beginning of last September had brought on sinking spells, dizziness, mild gastric complaints. I went so far as to pay a nickel for the privilege of rubbing my head against the head of Miss Rachel's cook's son who had was afflicted with a tremendous ringworm. It didn't take. <laughs> oh my God, I love Scout. But I was worrying another bone. Do all lawyers defend... Mm, stopped herself. Negroes. She's going to say the N word. Caught herself. Negroes Atticus. Good girl. <laughs> she's trying. <laughs> There'll be a few slip ups when she's getting there. Of course they do, Scout. Then why did Cecil say you defend N words? Didn't quite take it. We're close. <laughs> he made it sound like you were running a still. Have you ever had that? Like, I know how I feel. I'm telling people God are just, God is just good. And they make you feel like you're running a still. I've had people tell me I'm demon possessed because I say God doesn't get angry, jealous, hate, war, kill men, women, and children. He's just good, unmixed. Tell me I have a demon just like this. Do you feel that frustration? I, and it just brought back. That's why I was laying on the couch. Why, God? Why? Why? <laughs> oh, hey, but, there, you know. You could be saved if you want to be saved. It's all right here. What are you going to choose to think and say and do? Don't be common. This book is deep, guys. Loving this. Okay, so Atticus sighs because <laughs> he sees she's already slipping up. <laughs> she hasn't taken it. Atticus sighs. I'm simply defending a Negro, and his name is Tom Robinson. He's not a thing. He's a human being. Isn't that like when we want to hate and kill someone, we want to take them from not being another human, but to a thing? My friends, he lives in a settlement beyond town. He's a member of Calpurnia's church, and Cal knows his family well, says they're clean living folks, good people, but everyone else is saying they're bad people. Mm, watch yourself, Megas. <laughs> that angers me. I don't want to get angry. I don't want them to dim my light, <laughs> my friends. We've got to stay in that higher frequency, in that love. Don't let them turn us into them, right? Oh. Oh, uh, let's see. Scout, aren't you old enough to understand some things yet? But there's been some high talk around town to the effect I shouldn't do much about defending this man. Uh, see, Scout says, if you shouldn't be defending him, then why are you doing it? For a number of reasons, Atticus said. The main one is, if I didn't, I couldn't hold up my head in town. I couldn't re represent this county. I couldn't even tell you or Jem not to do something again. Right? He's He knows it's the right thing. So he's going to do the right thing, even though it's not popular. Even though, you know, whenever you try to pop your head up and say and do the right thing, there's always someone to hit you on top of the head. But he would rather get hit on top of the head and do the right thing. Do right just because it's right. There's no reward. No one's going to applaud you. No one's going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Matter of fact, they're probably already checked off 12 minutes into it. But you do it because it's right. You mean if you... And this is... Scout, I love the way her brain works. You mean if you didn't defend that man, Jim and me wouldn't have to mind you ever again? <laughs> oh, this is pretty deep. I, I want you guys to see this here because I, I, I like where he's going with this, but I wish he had a little Atticus. I wish he would have had a little different mindset here. Okay, so Atticus tells Scout, you might hear some ugly talk about it at school. But do one thing for me, if you will. You just hold your head up high and keep those fists down. <laughs> That's going to be hard for Scout. No matter what anyone says to you, don't let them get your goat. 
Try fighting with your head for a change. It's a good one, even if it does resist learning. Atticus is a good daddy, isn't he? Scout asked Atticus, are we going to win it? No, honey. How sad is that? He's going to fight anyway, but he knows he's not going to win it. She says, then why? Why bother? Simply because we were licked a hundred years before, we stated is no reason for us to not try to win, Atticus said. Now, he's doing the right thing because it's right, He has, but he has no belief he can win. I wish he would have had the mindset that I am going to win. I will not take no for an answer. I will not let an innocent man go down for this. You know, it makes me, was it Ford that said, if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. Right? Either way, you're right. If you believe you can, you're right. If you believe you can't, you're right. I wish he would have went in with that mindset because I think it would have rubbed off on others. I'm going to stand for what's right. It might have stirred something up in other people. That's what I hope I do with my messages in Zoroastrianism. It'll stir some, something up. Even though it seems like you can't win, the whole world, the whole world religious system, no matter what they call their God, it's the same thing. You call it a Jehovah, a Allah, whatever. It's the same God of Jacob, Isaac, and, and Moses, and the same stories, and the same God that can love or hate, peace or joy, right? Kill men, women, and children. Stone your children when they're disrespectful. Sex slaves. Slavery's fine in the Bible. Matter of fact, was it Paul that said, uh, obey your massa like you would the Lord, Right? Come on, people. Come here, Scout, said Atticus. I crawled into his lap, tucked my head under his chin. He put his arm around me and rocked me gently. It's a different time, he said. This time we ain't fighting the Yankees. We're fighting our friends. But remember this, no matter how bitter things get, they're still our friends, and this is still our home. <laughs> Atticus. I love him. All right, we're wrapping it up here. Oh, Lord of mercy. Okay, so she's at school again. Now she's got to put into practice everything Atticus has taught her. Already the kids are coming up to her saying your daddy's Defending that N-word. My daddy says he ought to be hung. I drew a bead on him. <laughs> She's got her fist up. Drew a bead, focused, ready to take this boy out, my friends. But then she remembers what Atticus had said. And she dropped her fist and walked away. So proud of her right now. They start yelling out, Scout's a coward, ringing in my ears. It was the first time I'd ever walked away from a fight. My God, I know that feeling. It eats at you. It hurts worse than getting the shit kicked out of you. To be called a coward and to walk away, it hurts. It's not always easy to do the right thing. But somehow, if I fought Cecil, I would be letting Atticus down. That actually made me emotional. These fictional characters, the scout has gotten in my heart so much, I'm fighting back tears, guys. This is why I was laying on the couch, thinking, what is wrong with me? This is not normal reaction to fiction books, is it? Oh, I would be letting Atticus down. Atticus so rarely asked Jim and me to do something for him. I could take being called a coward for him. Whew, that hits me on so many different levels right there. I f and here we go. She's gonna make <laughs> she makes me laugh again. I'm about to cry. Now she makes me laugh my ass off. I felt extremely noble for having remembered and remain noble. For three weeks. <laughs> she was she waited three whole weeks to beat the shit out of someone again. <laughs> I love her. 
so much, guys. Oh my gosh, this book, it's too much. It's too much. It, it, it's the story itself. It's like we're talking about in yesterday's video. It's also how it takes you inside yourself. Makes you question things in your own mind, your own beliefs. It, it takes you back to your childhood memories. I think that's what somehow this author tapped into that, which makes it even deeper beyond the story because you're you're injecting your life into it, you, the things you've gone through. So so it gives you the that sense your senses are involved, right? I remember when she's rolling in the tire. I did that with my friends. I remember the smell of the rubber, the sound on the gravel. Right, just the, the climbing the trees that you can, it's tactile. I can feel it. I'm there. The emotions, the frustrations, the, the, the victories, the lessons. So much. Oh my God. Scout, do you know what Scout reminds me of? Is my grandma Millie. Grandma Millie was my everything. She was just like Scout. She was raised in the South, and she, and she has so much fight in her. I think that's where I get that from. I have so much fight in me. I was her favorite. I was her special thing. No one else in the family had that connection like me and Grandma Millie had. Our love was so strong, my friends. And, and the stories I hear of her, you know, one time a car ran an intersection as a drunk, T-boned another car. Guy gets out of the car. He's all wobbly. He's drunk. He goes to get try to get back in his car and get away. Grandma Millie runs up, tackles him to the ground, sits on him till the cops got there. Stories of my grandpa was an alcoholic and uh, he would be out, you know, running around, getting drunk, playing the fool Dad told me stories of he would come home, try to sneak in through the doggy door, right? Trying to be sneaky because she had locked the doors and he's trying to come through the doggy door. She grabs him, rips him through the doggy door, beats the shit out of him, throws him in the shower, turns on the cold water. I mean, she didn't take no crap, you know, and, and I pity the fool that would ever mess with her baby, her grandchild. And, and they, this is what made me actually make this video today. I, I wasn't going to talk about this. But uh, I'll show you what it was. I felt it was like my spirit guides telling me from something I read on the next page. Tell the story. What the, What do you have to lose? <laughs> People are unsubscribing from your channel left and right anyway. Some, there might be one person that will enjoy this story. <laughs> that's what I make these for. One other person like me that's got a little frustration with what's going on in the world. I remember my grandma. I, I have that one of my giftings. It is, I, I can see and know things that others don't. My grandma had that. My dad has that. Uh, my grandma, we're sitting, uh, or actually we're standing in the kitchen. And, and it was the whole family and, and friends. The kitchen was packed. Is it was at my parents' house. And, and I'll never forget, the, it went real quiet. Because Grandma Millie, she's big woman, right? She's not a little dainty grandma. Grandma Millie big southern woman right and when she talked people listened her voice resonated through the whole kitchen and she looked at my friend dan As a matter of fact is dan he's the one on the thumbnail if you're still here that you saw me giving a big smooch she looked at him and said if you break up my grandson's family I will kill you. And everyone knew she was serious. She would do it. She would kill him. She would bury him in a stump up on the top hundred acres. And no one would know any different. <laughs> My friends, place went silent. And we're all, where did that come from? At the time, there was no, I mean, this was like a year before it actually happened. She saw it. Saw it. She knew it. Now, by the time it happened, she is well into her 80s, too old to beat the shit out of him anymore. So I, I did it for Grandma Millie. I went out there and beat the living shit out of him. Yeah, see that? Look at that thumbnail again, that cute little face. I 
punched his fucking stupid face so hard. But now we're 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 friends again, and I'll t I'll get more into it. But boy, did we fight, guys. We went from being friends to I was betrayed. He broke up my family. I, I'm back in my family home right now, and I remember my little son sitting on my lap, tears crying, going, "Daddy, please make it go back to how it used to be. I, I don't want it like this anymore." He developed nervous twitches. Uh, it, all of us were losing our minds because our family was being broken up by this motherfucker. And, and mind you, I was not Zoroastrian yet, yet. I was old school, Old Testament. Hey, if you can stone your child for being disrespectful, he has no idea what's coming for breaking up my family. My family I was going Old Testament on him. My God, we fought. I remember the first time I went out there, jumped out of my car, ran up to him, boom, right in his stupid face. He pulls out mace, sprays me. It just pissed me off. I ripped off my shirt. I went after him. We're fighting. He pulls out a gun, puts it to my forehead. This is just our first fight, my friends. It, it escalated. Pretty soon, cops are getting involved. I'm denying everything, <laughs> you know. Uh, and it finally got to the point, my friends, where I thought, I'm going to take this fucker out. I had reached it here. I'm not a Zoroastrian. It's kind of like you see right now with, with, with Israel fighting Palestine and the horrific things they're done. And they've asked the different leaders like Hamas, the things that you, you've done, you know, talk about throwing babies in ovens and the innocent people killed. Doesn't that go against Allah and your religion? He said, nothing we've done has gone against the Quran. Same thing. Look, look at the other side, Israel. Nothing they've done has gone against the Bible, against Jehovah. Right now with Russia, what's going on? They, they asked Putin directly, doesn't this go against your Christian beliefs? No, it doesn't. My friends, that's the problem with it. And, and, you know, and even though that always bothered me, always in my heart, it went, get, went, it went against what I knew. This time it, I was thinking, this might work for me. It, you know, if I get rid of this guy, because you know how violence escalates. It went from punching to mace to guns to, and it escalated from there. I don't want to talk about. And, and, you know, I'll tell you what happened, guys. Spirit intervened. I, I got to the point where I thought, I'm going to get rid of this fucker. And, and spirit came to me in a dream and vision. And, and I saw Dan and I saw myself with my arm, my hands around his neck, choking the life out of him. And I liked it. You know, all that hate I had in me for him. All the pain he caused me and my children. The betrayal of a friend I brought into my house. He would spend Christmas with us, Easter with us. I let him sleep in my home. They, they would send me out to go get stuff. Hey, hey, I, I need this. Uh, go get us some coffees. Go get us this. And they'd be fooling around. I'd go up and go to bed at night and they'd stay up to watch movies to make out. Oh, I was mad. And I saw myself in this dream and I'm choking the life out of him. And I liked it. And then in this dream, his face turned to my daughter's face. And she goes, Daddy, what are you doing? It hurts. Ow. Oh. And, and I woke up. And even though I was awake, I heard spirit say, that's how much I love Dan. Leave him alone. I said, okay. And something changed in my thinking to, to see how much God, this just good, could love him. Didn't tell me to stone him. Didn't tell me to choke him to death. And this was start in of my journey from the Abrahamic religions to the true religion. My friends, and where it got to the point where you see that picture that was taken later. That was taken after all this, guys. This wasn't before. Giving them a big old smooch. My friends, I, I, and I'll tell you how it started. Started, one, with that dream and vision. Secondly, it started with... I, I want to be careful I touch because I don't even fully understand how this works. I, I have foresight like i was telling you my grandma had it my dad has it i have it i'll see and know things before it happens so my ex-wife came up to me and said this has to stop you and dan fighting and this just came out of me i said i will never lay another hand on him but you will watch him die from the inside out 
as I drove away from our little meeting there, it hit me. My friends, I started crying uncontrollably. I, I, I started begging God for his life. I, I, I couldn't reason out what was happening. Why am I begging God for his life? I knew what I had just decreed and declared would come true. But I didn't want him to die. And now I'm, I'm confused. Did, did I just, did I have foresight? Did I see what's coming? And I just prophesied it? Or, or was that a curse? I, I, I don't want to be the kind of person that, that uses my, my abilities to curse. Uh, that's not who and what I am. And I was begging God with tears flowing down. Let him live. Don't, don't let him die. I knew he was going to die. My friend, short time afterwards, he, he came to the door. He, he, his color was off. He's like turning gray. He's looking skinnier. He's kind of hunched over. He's not doing good. A few months later, he, he's on death's door. He, he got to the point where he, he, uh, he, he couldn't function anymore. And, and, uh, so now my ex-wife isn't, uh, liking him so much anymore. She gets pregnant. So she had married him. She gets pregnant by another man, so now she's leaving Dan. So now they got joint custody of their child. And so they had a baby, which I love her so much. She's my baby too. I fell in love with his daughter. Okay? And I could see in her face, Dan's face, which made me like him a little more, my friends, because I could see the connection of the two. I love this girl so much. So now they're divorced. And so now he gets her on the weekends. He calls me and says, I, I, I got Autumn this weekend, but, but I, I, I'm too sick to do anything with her. Will you help me? So I said, all right, I'll do that. I, I take him to the pool. And, and uh, to even, I had to get him in his bathing suit. He, he, he can't even unbutton his own clothes. His hands are shaking. So I have to unbutton his shirt. I have put his shorts on. That's uncomfortable for me. That's not the kind of person I am. You know, like, here's your shorts, dude. Don't touch me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then he lays there in the sun on the chair while I'm in the pool splashing with his daughter, playing games. Marco Polo. How did we get <laughs> from beating the shit out of each other to me dressing and playing with his daughter, crying to God lets him live? <laughs> oh, this book brought up all of that. Don't be common. Don't go along with the crowd. Fuck their religions. Forget their false gods. Can we do better? Can we get a better religion, a better God, a better story, a better heart, a better world? It starts with you. Just one. Be the one. It's common. Everyone does it. Everyone says it. Less one. Less one. Less one. One.